This is Timmy Fitz. You're listening to the Break It Down Show with Pete and John. Tune in, love it, download it, live it. All right, we are here at Bayview Studios. My kitchen table. This is my when my kitchen table is my kitchen table, but when it has mics attached to it, it becomes Bayview Studios. Bayview Studios. Hi, welcome. Yeah, and we're here at Bayview Studios for the Break It Down Show with our special guest Tim Fitz. What up? Yeah, man. Tim Fitzgerald. How you doing, so, guys? Let's introduce Tim Fitzgerald. Okay. What what Tim is is a <laughs> <laughs> okay. What? <laughs> yeah. Tim's a fucking big ball of love. That's what he is. <laughs> yeah. He uh, he's a broadcaster who we are fortunate enough to be acquainted with and have worked with and have enjoyed uh, many a broadcast with mm-hmm. in the uh, Vallejo Admirals booth on Oscat Radio. Tell us some of the other things you do. You're the voice of Keel Haulers basketball. The Keel Haulers, the Cal State Maritime Keel Haulers, right there uh, on the edge of the bridge, and they have soccer basketball men's and women's that i'm doing that i am the voice of the q haulers now yes yeah man as marv christopher the ad there has labeled me uh before that the voice of the admirals uh have you two put together that you have me in common we haven't yet i don't think uh, i don't know just if we've gone up. there just for say yet. hey marv <laughs> john leon guerrero and i bet you he goes get motherfucker owes me 12 dollars <laughs> right. or something i heard he kissed a guy <laughs> <laughs> So that uh, there's the NFHS network, which is the National Federation of High Schools. They have their own network. That is, you know, so all the different high school activities, games, and playoffs and such, they send crews out to that. I'm part of that. This is my third season of that now. Wow. Um, The Raiders Finest Hour, my own podcast. Raiders Raiders Finest Hour. Raiders Finest Hour. Go to RaidersFinestHour.com. My co-host and I, Todd Allen, break down the Raiders in the in the most. The most intellectual yet informative and entertaining way you possibly can break down the Raiders. That's that's what we do. Uh, Is Todd Allen the illegitimate son of former Raider Marcus Allen? <laughs> no, um, he wishes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I, I think that's I think that's everything. Then there's the Fitz Blitz on Ozcat Radio, and and I put that archive up on FitzBlitz.com. I'm like you guys though; it, it takes a second to get some of those old ones in there. Yeah, yeah, right. Man, I'm glad to hear that you archive those because. You know, we have such a good time when we when we go on the Fitz Blitz. And yeah. I'll make my admission here because when we go on the Blitz, mm. anybody who's listening, they get your voice and mm. your, you know, statistical analysis of games and your blow by blow account and recap of of usually the previous ga- day's games because yeah. it's it's a Monday morning show. So right. It's a Sunday football. It's so professional. Man, you know what? More yeah. than once I've been on your show and I've gone in having like come back from camping or something where <laughs> and, and we know that's not true because i don't go camping but there have been occasions where i'd walk in there on monday morning and you'd be uh-huh. like joining me on the fitz blitz john leon guerrero from the midweek match and i'd yeah. sit down hey john how you doing hey great man let's talk about football and i'd just be like yeah man jesus what a day yesterday huh? and i didn't watch a minute of football and i just let you kind of wax poetic about the gotcha. day and i go yeah and guide you along from yeah. there, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what did you think about that eighty-two yard run, man? <laughs> the wheels on that guy, huh? And yeah. I'll say something like that. And yeah. if Pete's not there, I get away with it. If Pete's okay. there. Pete's like, you didn't say anything. <laughs> yeah. And that's what you can do with sports. Sometimes I've learned that in the colored commentator role, you can. It's easy to just chip in stuff here or there, uh, if even if you don't necessarily know. But it's. Uh, it helps if you do. <laughs> well, every once in a while, uh, Pete and I will find ourselves using a Fitzism. Okay. At some point during a game, what are some Fitzisms uh, about it? Just you know, like some of the times when you refer to something that somebody did mm. as the action, mm. and then attribute it to who it was. You know, like with the fifty-two yard touchdown that he ran, or something. I can't, okay. I, I'm trying to put together it. You know, like <laughs> the Fitzisms collections. Yeah, yeah, and and. <laughs> There's a certain pattern uh, there, to saying things that a, there is. That there's you can get into, a, and yeah. there's a cadence to the yes. way that you deliver it. Yeah, and when the and then when when it comes, then we identify it. And I can't okay. for the life of me recreate. It <laughs> suck. But every once in a while, we'll say something on accident. Okay, we'll go, yeah, that's not, yeah. Right. that was a fitzism. That right on, fitzism. Excellent. Well, I'm happy to be here, though. Well, man, we're yeah, glad thanks. to have you. Yeah, so yeah. you follow on our podcast a New York Times bestselling author who mm. we we're talking about and really dig and 
let's face it, you haven't written a New York Times bestseller. No, no we're not there but yet. But the, <laughs> the similarities between you and him, because we're just following his podcast okay. with your podcast, the calm nature okay. of your delivery, even though you're delivering sports and you do it in an exciting way, you do it in a measured tone. And I know that you, obviously, you trained to be a broadcaster. Sure. You're not just some... some uh, dimwit who jumps on the mic and hollers because somebody scored a touchdown yeah but gus um, johnson <laughs> <laughs> sorry sorry that's a low blow see there's things i can get away with here yeah <laughs> right. you can you can say fuck and shit and <laughs> cock and goddamn too that's there's been a lot of those on the raiders finest hour yeah, yeah. <laughs> well the thing that intrigues me about your uh raiders finest hour podcast is that everybody here who suffers the raiders mm. And uh, like Herbie, my son Herbie's a Raiders fan. God bless the mm. fucking Raiders. Um, <laughs> but you're from St. Louis. Yeah. You don't have to suffer the Raiders. Right. And you choose to. Yeah. There was a time period in St. Louis of no football and bad football. Those yeah. are your choices in the mid-80s. Wow. Uh, right. And so you start. I started to latch on to other teams. Started to pay attention when those football Cardinals were... Of the mid-80s, the 86, 87 team, trying to get a wild card spot at the end of the season, losing to the Redskins, you know, in 1984. Stuff like that still, in my head, as a little kid, as a little kid even, you know, those things stick in like, well, oh, this team isn't fun to watch. Wow, that Bo Jackson's pretty awesome, though. I should start watching those guys. Yeah, that was the okay. time to understand. Oh, oh, and they added that Tim Brown fella. He's pretty good, too. Oh, I'm going to keep watching Touch these guys. Tim, you know what I'm saying? So, so, so when you go to the Foot Locker and you buy a, a football jersey, you're looking like, oh, there's Neil Lomax <laughs> and there's Bo Jackson. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think I had a... Lomax. Think, Neil Lomax. Yeah, Lomax. Lomax. Neil Lomax. Both Jackson, guys that boy. ended up with uh, hip degeneration <laughs> injuries. <laughs> right. I think go. I had a Roy Green jersey of those 80s okay. Cardinals. Roy That's Green. what I had. Oh, yeah. Jesus, you might as well have had a Lorne Green jersey. <laughs> yeah. he, he had a run. He had a minute there where he was up there, and then it kind of stopped. Do you have, do you have a Chuck Cecil? <laughs> no, no <laughs> Chuck Cecil. Cecil. <laughs> Chuck Cecil. Uh, yeah, Chuck Cecil. A Stump Mitchell yeah. jersey, I think, sure. maybe I had oh, as a kid. Oh, Stump Mitchell. That's a good one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a great one. Uh, and there was in the early years of Otis Anderson yeah. is what I caught in my yeah, childhood. Before he, he was, was good. Before, well, when he was putting up ridiculous yardage numbers on a bad team. On a yeah, bad team. That's what yeah. his deal was back then. And that guy was perfect for Bill Parcells. At the end assistant. of his career with Parcells, that was perfect. He's like, yeah. all you need to do is get about, I don't know, three and a half yards. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I do that all day long. <laughs> yeah, I can fall forward. Can you have a white guy back me up? <laughs> sure. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, so latched on the Raiders in the mid-'80s. And then I moved out here in '98. And here I was right around the Raiders, lived in Oakland for a little bit. So Biggity, biggity, oak. And it, and it, and it, you look like you lived in Oakland. Yeah, thank you. So I developed a, a, a civic union, as I call it, with this, you know, with a team, a civic union with the Raiders that uh, I lost with the, with the Cardinals moving to Arizona. Yeah. In that time of no civic union, like no civil union, I was definitely playing around. It was... Whatever the hottest thing was at the time, those '80s Giants I was into, those Randall Cunningham's Eagles, the <laughs> Barry Sanders Lions. In that time of no football in St. Louis, I oh, it's was a good thing disinfectant wipes. Also <laughs> yeah, I was all over the place. Like a football yeah. whore. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty much was what it was. Yeah, I was screwing everything that was Any hot at port the time. In a storm, <laughs> and it's always raining when Timmy Fitz is watching football. And he's like, "I'll take it." <laughs> yep. So yeah, so there was that loose period. Then the Rams came to town and. I uh, was worked for them for a couple of seasons, and so I have my two civic unions with the the LAX teams. Yeah, that shot out of there. Who one or two of them could go back? So we'll see. I'm in a, in a strange place of fluctuation with the NFL. With between between the domestic violence and and the corporate greed involved in it, mixed with what if I have no civic union with a team? I don't know. I could be seeing a transition period as an NFL fan, like you're going through. Pete. Yeah, I. Don't, I I don't consume the NFL product. And, it, you know, it just it doesn't hold anything for me. It, the mm. civil uh, disbehavior mm. of the players is one thing. Mm-hmm. Their handling of it, which is it just a, makes it worse. Terrible. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, honestly, I, I don't know another organization that, that pays people that much money, mm. that they make so much more money. Yeah. And then people are broke in a very short amount of time afterwards. Time, the NFL man. ought to be ashamed of themselves that they haven't figured out how to make that 
better. There shouldn't be yeah. a 30 for 30 movie called Broke yeah. with a bunch of NFL dudes on it going, man, it's all gone. It's gone, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there was, there's got to be some way to improve the pension plan. And, you know, credit to Mike Ditka for uh, putting up a fight about yeah. that. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I wish them the best of luck. Those old guys made the NFL what it is today, and they just sort of discarded at the curb. Well, and, and guys like Vince Young who come in mm -hmm. who have a failed career and have spent every dime. Yeah. And, and, you know, a young football kid growing up in Texas isn't held to the same standard as, as a young smart kid in yeah. Texas. Yeah. And so they, they, they walk have out. those. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they do. They do. They got a couple. They're there. <laughs> and it's just, it's terrible that the NFL one can take money out of your pocket. Like they I'm can. I'm just for those kidding. Yeah. Texas. Don't, 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 don't Mad tweets all from it. Texas. Man. All from Texas. <laughs> we love Texas. We do. You mentioned Texas for long enough, and John's going to talk about the Salt Lake. Oh, dude. Oh, the yes. The Salt Lake. Yeah. Oh. I know you will. <laughs> We're going to get back to this NFL business. But you know what? <laughs> Even as something as simple as the cream corn at Rudy's. He's been talking about cream corn he all week. He has been. Dude. <laughs> I, went to, I went to San Antonio, you know, and I had my That's what job. brought it up. We talked about San Antonio. We did. My job... Going to San Antonio, I was tasked with taking these people out and, and you know, just making a good time out okay. of it. And so they would just have – spreading some company goodwill. Mm -hmm. And I went there for a company I used to work for who's not a sponsor, so I won't mention their name. But <laughs> uh, I went there, and I used to catch heat from my boss because, okay. like, he'd look at my receipts and go, really? You took out, like, the most – two most important executives – at that Fortune 100 company, and you spent eighty two dollars on dinner. <laughs> you know, I would yeah. get in trouble for spending not Too enough low, money. Yeah, yeah. and uh, he was like, "Yeah, you're supposed to show him a good time, mm -hmm. take him somewhere nice." So I got there, and I was. We were rewarding a team of five or something for doing some, some performance thing that okay. was pretty cool. Right on. And uh, so I said, "Hey, so we're going to go to lunch. I'm going to take you guys to lunch where wherever you want to go." And they said, "Oh yeah, we'll go to Rudy's." Mm. Well, Rudy's is a, it's a small chain. Sure. And, uh, and it's good. Yeah. But like the Rudy's in San Antonio's in a gas station. Oh, okay. It's in a gas station. Wow. Yeah. So it's just a, it's not fancy. Yeah. And so it was barbecue and I love brisket. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to Rudy's for barbecue. And and whenever I would I had to teach this string of classes, so I met probably two hundred people that day, right. and I was taking five or six of of them to lunch as a reward. Right. So I would I would meet everybody and go, hey, and we'd do the icebreaker or whatever. It'd be a class of twenty five, and they'd say, yeah. So you're the, you're the guy who's taking everybody to lunch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are you going? <laughs> Uh, well, it sounds like we're going to Rudy's. Yeah. And I was at that point unfamiliar with the place. So I was just throwing it out there. Yeah. Everybody said they want to go to Rudy's. So yeah. we're going to Rudy's. I love brisket. Yeah. I'm in Texas. Yeah. You know, hey, but to a person, everybody who m made a comeback remark to we're going to Rudy's said, oh, you got to get the cream corn. <laughs> <laughs> and so by, you know, the fifth or sixth person who says Still this, I'm like, cream. really? I got to get the fucking cream corn? <laughs> Is there brisket? Their brisket must be shit if everybody yeah. loves the cream Doesn't corn. And they're like, yeah. no, the brisket's good, but okay. get the cream corn. Okay. And then I was like, okay, whatever. Maybe they're just, everybody's jaded to brisket. So I go there and we get all the, you know, hot links and brisket and all that stuff. And so we're getting piles and piles of lovely barbecued yeah. smoky meat. And I go, oh, yeah, by the way, we're getting the cream corn. And they're like, of course you are. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we get the cream corn, and I sit down, and I have a bite of it. And I'm like, holy shit, this fucking cream corn. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Who can I hug about this cream corn, you know? <laughs> I'm giving out hugs. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's a that remarkable cream corn. So don't make no mistake, Texas. Okay. You know, I'm going to make fun of you because... It's fun. There's plenty of material to work with. But there's so much good food in Texas. Gotcha. I mean, the Salt Lick, you know, and everything at the Salt Lick is wonderful. You know, Rudy's. And they're a chain that's in gas stations, and they're wow. terrific. But one of the most glorious meals I ever had was in Texas. Mm -hmm. And it was at Fogo de Chao. Have you ever eaten at Fogo de Chao? No. Oh, holy yeah. shit. They're a chain, dude. Okay, it's a yeah, I don't know. Brazilian churrascaria. Yeah. Oh, okay, one of those spots. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay. I've been to one of those in San Francisco, but I've never... That's the only one I've And I'll tell to. you what, I'd love to eat in San Francisco. Yeah. But the Brazilian steakhouse joint in San Francisco is just okay. It was, yeah. We, we enjoyed it, for sure. Yeah. But it, it, yeah. It, it's, it's good. But mm-hmm. holy, holy Not God. the same. The Fogo yeah. de Chao in Texas. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. went to the one in Addison. I went to the one in... You got asparagus as big as your dick in there. Well, it's gigantic. That's not saying that much, but yeah, they do. They do. I think uh. Pete just said my junk was gigantic. <laughs> I think you use the your in a general sense, perhaps. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. And, and asparagus normally isn't very, you know, big. Right. But right. That asparagus is that gigantic. That was a big trunk of asparagus, yeah. apparently. <laughs> right on. Yeah, so I don't know, you know, the strange balancing act of of fan towards the NFL mixed with just being a fan in general as I'm going through this life as a broadcaster in these early couple of years of it now the 3 years into it I'm, I'm I guess I'm in now and it's I don't know it's odd it kind of feel the fan in me dying a little bit sure. there's something you know, I don't know it's uh it's like broadcaster puberty sort yeah, of you've, right you've pulled back the curtain yeah yeah. On sports, and you've become part of the trade. Yes. Yeah, once you're in there a little bit. You've given solid commentary on the radio and had a player come look you up. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I did, and that lets yeah. you go, look, stop. Yeah. You know? You're yeah. doing your job. All yeah. right, listen. I'm doing uh, my job. I'm going to take a sidebar here. <laughs> I hope that Tim can't hear me, but Tim is, is not a big fella. No. <laughs> he's not slight by any any no, stretch, no. but but he's not he's not professional athlete big. No. It's all right. You know, he's probably what what do you think Tim is? Maybe well he just put a picture on Facebook five, and he was like the tiniest five, varsity seven, player in the Iron Nation or something. <laughs> I mean, you know. I'm a yeah. shade under five nine, yes, at uh at a little under one seventy, yeah. Okay. That's me. So. And he reps eighty five pounds on the bench like it's his fucking job. <laughs> sure. You know, he's killing yeah. yeah. No, I mean, he's I'm a, fairly freakishly strong. He's a, he's a well-proportioned, uh, yeah. he's a well-proportioned 175. <laughs> but uh, here's the thing. You got a, a, a guy who, who is a professional athlete and maybe feels like uh, less than flattered by a remark that Tim <laughs> makes. Mm. And Tim essentially tells the guys on his team, you tell them, uh, he, I'm right upstairs. <laughs> Pretty yeah. much. I'm right upstairs. Yeah. He tells a guy with a dugout full of bats, hey, <laughs> if your buddy has something to say to me, you yeah. know where the broadcast booth is. Yeah. I said, hey, you can come find me. I stuck stuck by my words. I yeah. was very yeah. complimentary to most of his game. He had one moment, this guy, where he throws a temper tantrum in the left-handed batter's box, hey, and good, good I didn't player. care for it. Yeah. He, he's yeah. a strong player. Right. Lots of tools. Exciting mm-hmm. to watch. But he threw a tantrum. Man. Yeah. Threw a big old tantrum. And so uh And that shit don't fly with Fitz. <laughs> well, I said, and it was and this is repeated behavior too. It was another this, this is another instance of him doing that earlier in the year. So it's the second time and it's like, ah, he does this again and I'd have tossed him and most everybody would have tossed him. I don't know why this ump was so lenient to not tossing this guy in the final series of the season, I guess, at some pressure perhaps as I'm Learning independent ball, refs can be influenced from various things, <laughs> you know, that people with reputation of getting hired for another one, something like that can affect stuff. So, right. um, yeah, he, he didn't toss him. I said some, said he should have, and that said the guy threw a tantrum. Also said he made a great throw from left later on. You know, I totally just call it as I see it. Great throw from left. Yeah. <laughs> for a punk ass. <laughs> so the <laughs> next day, yeah, I find out from our manager, hey, he's, he's looking for you. I'm like, Oh, okay. Well, what about? I, I don't see. I thought I, I said he made a good throw from left. Something else about a play later. He's like, something about you called him a baby or threw tantrum. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. He can, he can come talk to me if he wants. I think the word I used was punk ass. <laughs> <laughs> he said you called him a baby. No, I didn't call him a baby. I called him a punk ass. <laughs> he said he's acting like a little bitch in the batter's box. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I've seen how the sausage is made, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so there's that aspect of it. Then there's also. Just being on the inside and the fan interaction you get on social media and via the podcast and and just, uh, you know, t- social media, Twitter. Twitter's my favorite of the social media, and yet I kind of hate it at the same time. It's this strange dichotomy there, too. A love-hate relationship with Twitter. I like the the n- continuous news scroll and, and accessibility to information. It's also a little too much accessibility to opinions that I, I'll disagree with. And yeah. you can get into a, uh, a debate. I've coined that one, by the way, a to abate. To abate. Oh, nice. 
Twitter debate. I'm hoping that doesn't stick. <laughs> that that one's better. <laughs> that one's clumsy. <laughs> to abate? Yeah. yeah. I like to abate. Anyway. <laughs> the, There's uh, something horribly inappropriate about <laughs> that abate. sentence. Gotcha. I like, I like to abate. <laughs> I bet you do. It's a little abbreviation, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that that happens too easily, and I j- it just makes me want to back away from, like, I have these moments of, this fan doesn't know what he's talking about. Heck, this other broadcaster doesn't know what he's talking about. So I'm in this bad sophomoric phase of, and I don't know everything yet, you know, so I'm trying to temper myself on that of going through this this transition of of fan to broadcaster and that line is setting up a lot. I, it's funny, on Twitter, I don't see a lot of play-by-play guys. You don't see Greg Papa tweeting. You don't see John Miller tweeting. Uh, the guy from that I follow from my St. Louis Blues, Mr. Kelly, you don't see him tweeting. So the play-by-play guy doesn't tweet a whole lot. They stay back from that, so yeah. I see, oh, okay, I find myself doing that too. That must be, I guess I'm doing it right. <laughs> yeah, you I'm can learning. see where that dynamic, yeah. though, comes into play and doesn't fit. Right. With the... the print guy, the beat writer, yeah, the columnist, he's busy on Twitter. Sure. Okay. Um, yeah, because he lives so... by written words. Yes. Yeah, not so much the... Well, also, there's a um, battlefield mentality. Mm-hmm. To mm. to the commentator. I mean, you're you're in the trench. Mm. You know, it's one thing to to be the beat writer and write all about it afterwards. Sure, yeah. You know, not to downplay the uh, importance of the beat writer, but, right? But in but game different... action, uh, right. I'm a little busy. I guess. Yeah. yeah, it comes down to it too. So, yeah, tough. Uh, you know, I listen to sports talk radio, and I'm just I'm pretty annoyed by it most of the time. You know, I uh, when I when I rapped and DJed as my side thing. As my creative outlet back when I was at a dot com writing and editing, I didn't really listen to a lot of rap music. I was pretty turned off by the rap scene back then in the in the I guess it was early two thousands. And so yeah, now I don't listen to a whole lot of sports radio either. So I I don't know, I try to make my own brand of it or change it, I guess, a little bit too. Sure. Yeah. Well that's something. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because my whoremongering didn't didn't slow down any when I was pimping. Um, that's a joke, Texas. Yeah, don't, yes. don't tweet. Don't get all upset. <laughs> so, so I'm glad to be here because then I don't have to be official when I'm on air, play by play. Yeah, you're all business. Uh, we, we talked about this before. Still loosen up. I'm still a, a loose loose broadcaster who puts his personality in not too stiff i like to have fun up there and make some jokes and and let my personality come through i guess basically yeah. but you still got to be official still you have watch a, your you words you have a job to do that you definitely uh, or, you even know, on social approach. media i still right. have to you know yeah. have to watch my words can't get too you're still someone's employee representing that too publicly representing that organization that too yeah so the FM airwaves, but you know, you guys, you guys know I behave in a pretty fair manner, even in trash talk mode, or, or you know, I, I'm very, I'm pretty balanced with it. I might, if I talk it, still, you're certainly no still... Joe Buck. That's just me being a Giants fan. So. <laughs> um, but you know, I, I try to keep my my trash talk factual when jabbing, and and I, 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 you know, I have to play it kind of middle of the road. Raiders. Raiders show, the podcast, is where I let that out a little bit. I've let out conspiracy theories, the Timmy Fitz conspiracy theory of the week, uh, all kinds of stuff is where I what cut What would one of those bit. conspiracy theories The be? Raiders are Al tanking. Davis. Al Davis shot JFK. <laughs> yes. Again. <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> Not just once, he shot him two separate times. Yeah, the Raiders are tanking the, right. ever since the preseason when they realized they weren't going anywhere. They've intentionally been trying to lose and sticking with their current coaching staff helped. Uh what else? What else is one of them? The NFL doesn't really want a team in L.A. They just want to dangle that threat over other markets to have to build a stadium. Otherwise, they're going to go to L.A. Now they have London. I want to buy that the theory. New- I yeah. want to buy that theory. <laughs> Why is it you think the NFL would not want a team in the second largest market in the country? Right. Well, here's one of the reasons is that TV is what makes it it's the second largest tv market yeah so the tv is the sell there in los angeles you get the game of the week you know if the chargers are on sure they're gonna have something there but for that transient population like we've talked about for uh people who are easily distracted by all the things you can do in la to the football side of it to see it on tv that's where it's at versus a stadium 
per se, and, and people going there and even add revenue for that team. It's the TV dollars in LA that, that make the big difference. So, so they're kind of good there, to be honest with you. They get the viewers because the game of the week's always on in LA versus some local having to see the Raiders or the Rams who weren't real fun to watch right now the after, and since they've left. Yeah. Um, they each had a little run for a minute there at the same time, but that's not a big television draw. So that's kind of like, you know, they talk about it. Yeah, number two market, big population, but that's where the money is for the NFL. And I just felt like if they wanted to do it, they'd have done it so long ago. They'd have said, okay, we're building a stadium. We're putting you in charge of ownership for this. And this is going to be our LA market team. But it, it's drug on since 1995. I mean... That's a long time. Ah, you mean to tell me the all-powerful NFL, like, I can't believe they didn't see a surveillance video of, of an incident in an elevator. You tell me they can't, that they don't have a way to pop up a team in L.A. like that in their control? Come on. I'm not buying it. There's a long list of guys who would love to be an NFL owner who are yeah. in L.A. too. Yeah, right? So that could very well be, uh, you know. And So and that was my Let's not even call it a conspiracy yeah. theory. Let's just say that it's just you know, a good business theory and yeah. they're just being quiet about it, which I guess is the nature of a conspiracy, but sure. That conspiracy theory's nature is also like primitive people explaining thunder too. I don't quite know how this works, but here's my my connecting of the dots that right, right. <laughs> and those dots are far apart. <laughs> yeah. I can see that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I don't know how, how this works. How is, how is, uh, since I'm going to use that simile anytime. <laughs> I, I got a couple people in my life who throw out a conspiracy theory every now and again. Yeah. Right? And I'm going to use that theory to call them out on it. <laughs> Good. Like you fucking simpleton. <laughs> you are a caveman explaining thunder. <laughs> Good. Like and then it. I'd like to see you maybe do like a caveman dance, like part monkey, part man <laughs> yeah. dance, you know? Like, that's <laughs> how I dance. <laughs> oh, that's, that's true. That's how I dance. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. That'd be good, though. I'd like to see that. Yeah. yeah. But I appreciate that explanation. I mean, oh, you're welcome. we've talked about the L.A. market and how it's a different place from everywhere else because of, you know, being the center of the entertainment business. Yeah. And it's even different from New York because New York has such density. Yes. Yeah. And with, with L.A. sprawl. So scattered. Yeah. L.A. has mental sprawl, too. Mm, yeah. So they don't feel any loyalty, and there's so many transplants. As many transplants as there are to New York, I think it's a little different because there are a lot of there's still m- many yeah. generation New York natives. Such an old city of being a major metropolitan right. for a long time, whereas Los Angeles has a major metropolitan area. Late 50s? Yeah. 60s? Yeah. And that starts to happen. That's yeah. not time for six generations. No. <laughs> That's not time for, you know. So it's yeah. a little different. It's a little different. There isn't uh, that deep-seated culture that, that exists in, mm-hmm. in New York. But there are all the trappings, all the distractions, yeah. all of the things that are stereotypical L.A. would pull you away from being a, a loyal sports fan. From following even some 500 ball club, yeah. Yep. Yeah, whereas you put a 500 ball club in a Midwest town, kind of desperate for something to do on a cold Sunday. Yep, there's still going to be about sixty thousand folks rolling in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're going to the be shareholders. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, I once visited Scotts Bluff, Nebraska. Okay, and I thought it would be a good. I've been there actually more than once, and the first time that I went, I uh, I wanted to check. Wyoming off of my list, and I don't really have much call to Wyoming. No, but I wanted to set foot there, so I thought, to say. "Well, here's what I'm going to do. That's cute. I'm going to fly into Denver, and I'm going to get out. And I'm going to rent a car, mm-hmm. and I'm going to drive to Laramie, Wyoming. Okay, just drive up eighty, and I'm going to get out in yeah. Laramie, have a meal, you know, flirt with a waitress. Yeah, get back in my car, check Wyoming off the list, and hook a right, and go to Scotts Bluff. Okay, so that's what I did. So I get to Scotts Bluff, and the whole town falls asleep at 8:15. Yeah. And that's fine. They have a nice they have a nice little Hampton Inn up there. So I hold up in the Hampton Inn and I'm flipping through and I come across the local real estate channel. Okay. And it was cool. I was digging the real estate in Scotts Bluff cuz they had this house. It was a 3800 square foot brick Tudor house. It sat on a 10-acre mesa. Whoa. 
And the 10-acre mesa had on the uh, western edge of it red rock formations that mm. just reflected the sun beautifully yeah. at sunset. Yeah. I mean, this this place was just gorgeous. It had a newly rewired workshop. Mm-hmm. With pneumatic tools, Whoa. it had oh, th- it was it was just marble and granite everywhere. Okay, there was a corral. Ooh. It was it was oh, it was a gorgeous property. This was you know several years ago, but but not in the Stone Age. I mean, it was probably the early two thousands. They wanted a hundred and fifty nine thousand dollars. Okay, for this property. Yeah. Now at the time, I had a shithole in Vallejo. It was okay, a three bedroom, two bath, twelve hundred and forty four square feet. That was worth a half a million dollars. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I was thinking, I'm gonna buy this place. I'm gonna buy it, and I'm gonna rent it out, and I'm just gonna sit on it until it's time for me to retire, and then I'm gonna retire to this gorgeous joint. <laughs> or maybe I'll just work remotely, and I'll live in this beautiful place, mm-hmm. and I'll raise my Nico's 17 years old, but he was, you know, probably four at the time. Okay. And I thought this would be a great place to do this. I'm going to do it. Yeah. And I start contemplating this. It took me about an hour and a half of honest contemplation to realize I'm fucking four hours of a drive from any. Anywhere. Professional sporting event. (laughs) Yeah, this is too. (laughs) Pick a sport. Yeah. Any of them. Anything, yeah. You know, really the closest thing was four and a half hours away in Denver. Oh, okay. And you know. Versus you weren't close enough to Lincoln or anything like that? For nope. The, no, okay. Nope. I, I was in completely the other side of mm. Nebraska. Gotcha. And so any of the Omaha mm. was like six hours away. Okay. So the closest thing was Denver. And, okay. you know, fuck the Nuggets. <laughs> um, no doubt. Rockies? Eh. Yeah, no. You know, Broncos? Eh. No, definitely not. So... You know, if I wanted to see professional caliber sports, I would have to drive four and a half hours. Unless it was like maybe, I don't know, calf roping. Yeah, huh. You know, maybe that's closer. It's probably, yeah, it's probably had a big calf roping rodeo going on. Something. Yeah. But. Uh, so, so here's my question to you, Fitz. Uh-huh. If someone says, hey, we got a uh, 150 bucks for you to come call a calf roping contest. Mm. What's your answer? I'm probably busy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably busy. Yeah. Probably. probably. Not yeah. definitely, though. What about 250? <laughs> that is... How long is the event? Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And is there a free he pie really, in it? He really is a whore. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> he really he is a whore. He was thinking about here's, it. Here's... Okay. I'm probably busy. He I'm, didn't say, fuck that. I'm not doing that. <laughs> Calf roping. Yeah. I've... Uh, what's my most obscure... Let's see. I had to learn high school wrestling last year. That's not obscure, but it's not the main stuff. So I covered that for the first time. A, uh, a swim meet. Did a swim meet for the first time last year as well. Um, that was the now, Oakland last, section. Last year was his first season of covering high school wrestling. Oddly enough, not his first season of covering a bunch of dudes. <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of dudes lying around in singlets. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was your bachelor party. That was right, a good one. Right. Yeah. And then and uh, another, <laughs> another fits is, is, oh, he goes ink well. <laughs> Yikes. That's a call you don't want to have to make in no, wrestling. No, yeah. definitely not. Uh, <laughs> the, let's, see, let's see, I've done golf. Okay. There you just shoot. That was just shooting highlights, so I didn't call it. My my challenge of the obscure is coming up. Oh, the, let's hear it. The 19th of November. I got to call it Cross Country. Championship, the San Francisco section cross country championship will be something I I will be broadcasting, and I'm trying to ask people. Some guy who had done it before, I'm like, so how how do you do this? He's like, well, do you ever listen to NASCAR on the radio? I'm like, fuck no, what do you yeah. <laughs> listen to well, NASCAR on the radio for? Uh, and he's like, okay, well, uh, and then he had to struggle to try to find another comparison. It's, you know, you got uh, somebody out there, you know, kind of on the on the spot doing stuff. I'm like, okay, all right. And as they come around, you're describing the action. And I'm like, okay, okay. Here and, comes Williams, number 243. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's running. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, how am I going to do this? All right. Yeah, so, so that's my new obscure Smith, challenge. right behind him. Right. Yeah. He's it's running It's like the too. stuff you see on, or used to see on ESPN in the 80s before they had. Oh, I love You know, when they were covering stuff. rodeo and kayaking. I and... was trying to describe to Nico what ESPN was when we were when kids, it, when, yeah. you know, when it was, it was just like a, it was a. When their main thing was arena football, yeah, they had that was their main thing. Arena <laughs> yeah. football, they had and lacrosse, Australian they had lacrosse, football, yeah. they had Aussie lacrosse, yep, yep. 
Yeah, and you would just watch these obscure fucking sports, <laughs> and you go, man. And I, I, I don't remember what the names were, but there was a, there was a moment where an Australian dude would get the ball, mm -hmm. and I don't remember what his name was or what their names were, but there was a brief moment in time when you knew who was exciting <laughs> okay, in Australian okay, real Australian. football. Nice. Yes. Like, I remember watching on ESPN um, – uh, uh, what do you call those things? Jet skis. They had oh, jet, yeah. ski competition. jet ski competition. And yeah. the only reason why I know this name is from watching ESPN. <laughs> the greatest guy ever was Larry Ribbon Kroger. Okay. <laughs> Larry Ribbon Kroger. Yeah. That's jet awesome. ski master. Uh -huh. And he would take that thing. He submarined it. He had all the names and everything. Under, and and he, okay. would did the, he did the submarine 180 first time ever. Wow. I saw it live. That's pretty ESPN. impressive, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, those early days at ESPN was, I think there's an old George Carlin joker. He talked about... You know, just be a couple of guys playing catch at three in the morning. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> That's great. If you like the show, and you know you do, send us some pictures of your movies. Don't do that. Support the show. There are three ways you can support us. Number one, go to iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you listen to podcasts. And leave a five-star rating and review. It helps with the show metrics and helps us get better placement. Number two... Visit our website, www.breakitdownshow.com. We've got an Amazon and an eBay link. Same Amazon, same eBay, you know and love, but they give us a little kickback when you get to their site from ours. And number three, leave comments about the shows that you like. We want to know what you think, how you feel. Tell us how to make the show better. We greatly appreciate it. Now back to the show. We like boobies. So why no to calf roping then? If you'll call cross country, you yeah. can't tell me you're going to be like, no, I'm not going to call your stupid calf roping. Ah, uh, no, that goes back to, uh, I want to see, I want to see. Well, the it's just because Fitz has cred in the, in the uh, cross country community. Right. He's real. <laughs> must be what it is. fucking real. Yeah, right. Well, let's also talk about, let's two things here. Location. Right. I am calling this cross country meet at the polo grounds in Golden Gate Park. Yes, indeed. Okay. You couldn't That's go to Stockton? Beautiful... You, could, you could do that. <laughs> but we were talking about going to Laramie, Wyoming. That's what I'm saying. I've been to Laramie, Wyoming twice. Yeah. And I got up you the next day. You didn't learn your lesson the, the first out. damn time. <laughs> <laughs> just get up, get out, go. Because it was just on my way west is when I Don't would stay Don't tweet us, Laramie. We, 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 <laughs> we, we, we Laramie. You know yeah. what's funny is we're not going to get any fucking tweets. Right? Do they, they have Twitter in Laramie? Yeah. Okay. Can you, either of you, can you combine to name five places in Wyoming? <laughs> Ready to go. Nope. Nope. <laughs> we had Laramie. Uh, we have, uh, is there a Cheyenne? There's a yes. Cheyenne. Yeah, Cheyenne. Cheyenne. Yeah. Cheyenne. That'd, be, uh -huh. that'd be the capital. <laughs> yes, thank <Good> you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. We're off to a good start. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I've been through there. You know, I've looked at all the towns of what has a hotel back before. A map like could be on, like this could be on your phone when you had to get the big fold out from Walmart with the map and big it's okay. Map, yeah. and look at the the one state right, wide and you one. You go like okay, it's Wyoming is in B <laughs> seven. Yeah, B yeah, seven, yeah. B it's seven. like playing Battleship. Oh, there, yeah. there you go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and and those maps, you still pulled those out and you fucked with them while you were driving too. Oh yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, while definitely. driving. Yeah, I was a right. cable man in yeah. San Pablo, <laughs> and I would have, and I drove a Chevy Love pickup. Oh yeah, yeah. with a utility box, <laughs> and I would have an unfolded map as I'm driving down San Pablo <laughs> Avenue and fucking with it, turning oh, it man. sideways. Yeah. Hey, let me ask you another question about okay. broadcasting. Have you had this moment? Uh, yeah, where you realize, hey, this because you you're fairly new to the game. You, mm -hmm. you said, forget the startup life, forget rapping and DJ and all mm -hmm. that stuff. I'm gonna go do this sports. This is what I yeah. I need to do. Yeah. Have you had the moment yet where you say, no shit, I can really do this. I'm I, really I'm doing really this. Make a living yeah. doing this. Yeah, it it started to hit this year as all the side jobs dissipate a little bit, and I'm actually making starting to make a living as a broadcaster. It's filling my calendar from tomorrow through the next Wednesday. I have five days of calling games in the next seven. I'm like, wow, I have a human standard work week again. I'm working five out of the next seven days. I'm calling games. One one day is a double header, so technically calling six games in seven days. And yeah, it is starting to hit. You have these moments where, uh, I guess maybe before an Admirals game, as I'm just sort of sitting there and and there's a crowd filing in and. And um, I'm talking to Gary Templeton's kid, and you know, and uh, it's... and you're a part of the infrastructure, of yeah, the, the event, you know, yeah. because the, that was one of the things where I mean that became an occupation, mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah it, it was something that we could see, 
Yes. Right. On yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. you can huh. see it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So okay, so so the Sioux Falls Shankers call you up and they say we want you to call our minor league team. <laughs> okay. But there's not much side work up in Sioux Falls. Sure. Can you take that gig? Here's or you what the point. Yeah. There's seasonal options for me with that. I could go to a town for, to cover baseball for the summer mm-hmm. and come back. You know, I, I'm okay with that. I'll definitely look into something like that too, where just for the summer for the baseball season, I'm somewhere else. And that's that's so. Fine. Let's say that somewhere else is someplace mm-hmm. like Fresno. Okay. I mean, at what point does a broadcaster? Because let's face it, a broadcaster for the Admirals does not make mm-hmm. a I'm going on the road living. Yeah. In, in that gig, yeah. but at some point, there's where you know where does the where do you cross the line where at this level of play, mm-hmm. if you're the broadcaster for this team, mm-hmm. you're suddenly you know they're putting you up. Okay. You can sustain the summer. Yeah. Is, different is, clubs do it differently where they will help you towards housing. They'll either pay for it. You'll live in some place that they have. They'll have a stipend for it. Okay, apply this much to wherever you want to live. As you get up into affiliated ball, when you get into the affiliateds with bigger clubs, that's when that starts to happen. Right. Uh, even if you're just an intern in the broadcast department, there's some sort of housing stipend if that's necessary. So it's... So in, in by affiliated for the casual listener, yes. you, you're talking about really that line is is for for some t- for some of the bigger teams at mm-hmm. single A. Yes, if you're calling the single A games and you're the voice of that team, they go okay. Yeah. Now we're putting the team up in you know in in this fashion, whatever it is. Yes, Maybe this they have you hotel know, in in Butte. You yeah, know, that they're right. going to. Yeah, <laughs> and and yeah. you're on the road with them just like. You know, just like Krug, Krug and Kai yeah. traveling with the Giants. Yeah, yeah so, exactly. So in, in low-A rookie ball, basically mm-hmm. the lowest level of affiliated ball, mm-hmm. can you make, for that, that season, can you make a living that doesn't require you to have a side job? You know, it depends. Different franchises pay a different amount. It seems like when you hit double-A double A's is right. when That's where it gets. that starts to crack through. Okay. Um, High-A, you're getting there, you're flirting with it, but double-A is where the there seems to be a line of where yeah. it changes and in what you're making, the stability factor. It uh, seems the like double A also though is the line. Yeah. Period. If you're a third baseman or a yeah. broadcaster or a you know, a journeyman coach, outfielder yeah. or a coach, yeah. when you hit double A is when they when the team says, mm-hmm. Yeah, we need you to stick around. Mm-hmm. And you might get pulled up. We have a genuine interest in you, yeah. Right. Yeah. And so it starts to change, you know, there's there's higher independent from where I am even. So there's right. that. There's the Frontier League in the Midwest, and that's 16 teams sure. established. The Atlantic League, Cape Cod, Canadian League. American League. Cape Cod is is what they call a summer collegiate league, uh-huh. and I've looked into those, and that's one of the few things that would not be a step up for me. There's now some things where I'm like, well, that would be a lateral yeah, move or a backward. Know. The Woodbat Cape Cod League? <laughs> yeah, How exactly. How dare you? <laughs> so there's some of those now. I'm like, oh, wow, Collegiate Summer League is actually something I've passed up. Arizona Fall Ball? Arizona Fall League, that's, you know, sure, that's an option too. That's something. But normally at that time, I've moved on to football and basketball. Right. I do like the the standard seasons. So, you know, there's that to where uh, AA seems like the line for that but there's higher independent even where things get a little better, a little bigger. But then once you clear the higher independent, then you're into rookie ball, then low A, A, high A. So there's all this different types of A. Right. And then you hit double A. And so that line is there as well. Yeah, there's a bunch of different A, but double A is this thing. There's no high double A. There's no no low double A. You're in double A. You're two steps away from the bigs now, and you're in some, some better markets, some places that, you know, Get a little bit. Uh, I think I think Portland has a double A team, so you right. may get into some some markets that are just uh, they don't have the big stuff. Right. But this is their closest. But to it's it. a good sized town, right? Well, yeah, a lot so. of those markets are are on the fringe of a metro, like Bowie Bowie Maryland. You know, yeah. where the Orioles have a team. Yeah. You're not far from anything, but that you're definitely too. in the lower minors. Though. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You There's know, I've hit it. places approximately an hour and fifteen minutes outside of Las Vegas, where it was like, yeah, we got all kinds of A going on here. That's right. Like we got Perron. single A. We got double A. How usually many A's double you A. Want? Yeah. 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 There's usually some T and A. Right. So, <laughs> yes. If you have to pick a sport, okay. What is it? I think I lean football, being that I played it the most, so I'm can see it from the inside a little better. Offensive um, lineman. Yes, was, of course. Was Timmy yeah, Fitz. absolutely. Yeah, that's a Fitzism. <laughs> is it to yeah. make a declaration and then assign it to the person? Oh, okay. 
a offensive lineman was Timmy Fitz. Oh, okay. That's a okay. Fitzism that we catch to ourselves doing. On. <laughs> Every once in a while, we'll say one of those things, and we'll go, yeah, yeah. yeah. I would lean I'm football. I'm almost a broadcaster. Baseball is, is cool, though. I like the everyday aspect of it. Basketball was the first thing I ever called, so that has some roots for it to me, that familiarity. It's an easier call, I'd say, basketball, uh, even though things are quick and moving. It's that's sort of what makes it moving. Yeah, yeah it's exactly. Sort of making, yeah. yeah, baseball. I had to learn to fill the time, but now baseball. I, baseball is a thing I've called the most now. Yeah. So there's a comfort factor there as well. I feel like you know it's a thing, and it's the thing I've called professionally, and it's a thing that people know me from now. And so there's a little bit of uh, of a comfort level with baseball that maybe yeah. maybe it's at the top. It's sort of a, a tussle with that in football, being that I know football from the inside out a little better. Uh, so there's that comfort zone, but that's neat to hear you express it that way mm -hmm. because it's like, you know, I mean, I liken everything to music. Mm. So for me, I imagine calling a basketball game because of the way that it moves. Yeah. is like playing, you know, in a punk band. Yeah. Where it's technically, you know, maybe yeah. physically demanding seeming. Yeah. But you got a couple of things that you can rest on right there and let the tempo Sure. Take you for the ride. Yeah, definitely. Whereas being a baseball guy would be like being a, a jazz drummer. Mm -hmm. You have to have the chops because yeah. there's open space. There's open space. Right. you got to fill the time. You and it will expose it. Yeah. you. Yeah, it definitely does. And you have to be like the workhorse guy who understands the game through and through because mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. And it's good to converse. And that's why it was always good having you guys there to, to converse in some of those baseball lulls, those natural lulls that... You know, I'm there by myself a lot of times, having to pull my Vin Scully off, and right. uh, and but uh, it's that's why it's always good to, when you guys pop in. I was excited about that. Yeah, man. Let's let's on this show talk about the first time we met, shall we? Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> let's. Since we're on here, we've talked about this on the Blitz. Did I have pants on? But here, you did. Oh, you okay. Did. All right. But the first time we met, you guys come to a booth Wednesday. It's one of my first times. I think that we got picked up on OzCat. So that was right. kind of a big deal to me. Maybe the second time we had been on the FM and you guys were kind enough to give your Wednesday slot, I think was the agreement to come out. Yeah, we'll go into the booth with him. We'll share that time and that'll be cool. And I was really psyched about it. And so we we're getting set I up. I was like, oh, yeah. free baseball game. Is there free food too? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're already there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We had a basket full of beers. Exactly. We were ready to go. Well, let me just give the pretext mm -hmm. also because the Admiral's gig was one that um that that was mentioned around the radio station okay yeah see this is a background info i'm still curious about we've known each other a, a year plus now and i still don't know about how there was what the talk was before Timmy well, Fitz arrives here's the thing it, there was no you know no timmy Fitz specific talk mm. but and and i'm not i mean you know where i'm coming from mm. i'm not a sports commentator okay However, I do love baseball. Sure. And when the when the Admirals showed up and when it was bantered around the radio station that that uh Ozcat was going to be the broadcast home of the Admirals, mm -hmm. uh Katie said, "Hey, you ought to put a tape together." Okay. And and submit it to this guy who will allow to remain nameless because yes. he's gone after a very short time. Yeah, before you showed up at the ballpark even that day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I did. I put together a little reel. Okay. And it wasn't anything big, but it was just me going through a few situations during a baseball game. Got it. And And I sent the audio file off. Well, I didn't get a reply. No. So it wasn't even like... Oh, okay, that's neat, but we have a guy in mind. Right. It was just like they didn't even reply. They're probably right. not even thinking of, you know, whatever. Yeah. So was I still... was actually relieved okay. to hear that there was an actual guy who's okay. a broadcaster who's <laughs> going to come do these broadcasts because at first I had a little bit of enthusiasm, like, hey, maybe I should do that. Yeah. And then as I thought it through, I thought – what the fuck am I going to do? <laughs> yeah. I have right. no business doing that a, gig. How am I going to fill in a pitcher's duel with a... Yeah. And right. And you. then the season gets closer and closer, and I still hear nothing. And mm. it went from, God damn it, they didn't, you know, the, like the rejection of, oh, sure. I didn't hear anything, to, I haven't heard anything. Yeah. What if no news is good news? And mm. they tell me on Tuesday, like, hey, our first game's <laughs> Wednesday night, so be there. And I'm yeah. like, what wow. the... Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Okay. 
Yeah, I was wondering what the backstory well, was th- still. Yeah. yeah, that's as much backstory as there is. So then yeah. we say, okay, hey, we get to go in the booth. Yeah. That means we get to do our wisecracking. Mm-hmm. But somebody, somebody actually else is going to do actually... the heavy lifting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's because I had I'd heard, yeah, there were rumors of the guys and, and that it was you guys had had interest before. I was like, okay, cool. It'd be great to have them in. Um, you know, for for that process for me was me taking my MLB.TV on the PlayStation, setting the audio to park, the oh, ballpark, where you only get the yeah, ballpark sound, Yeah, right? that's awesome. So crank it up yeah. on the surround sound, have my little recorder out. Actually, I might have just been my phone, uh-huh. and I, re- I did a half an inning of Cardinals Diamondbacks of 2013. Right, um, with park noise. Yeah, yeah that ambient sound, the, the ambient right. set the back cracking to where said owner who... Who we, it remains nameless at the time. He he thought, "Is that you making that sound? The bat crack there?" I'm like, "No, I am listening on my PlayStation with just the ballpark sound coming in." That's all I'm talking that's about. Genius, that's genius, so, by the way. Yeah, that's, so that's brilliant. Thank yeah. you. So that's and so it took me pestering them quite a bit for anything to get happening. And they they the original management kind of beat around the bush with me that this wasn't a paid position that that so they may have even feared oh we're not going to be able to pay this guy he's not going to want anything to do with this yeah so, i clearly was going to take my payment in hot link <laughs> yeah no doubt right but but we hadn't discussed any we hadn't of that discussed that yeah so so they kind of beat around the bush with it it's april and you know they're they're kind of iffy on it and and, and then it, it had came to me to, to decide is this what i got to do? do for a year do i have to be an intern again at my age just right. deal with that in order to get this ex- experience because I was led to independent ball after learning, after trying to apply to double A, thinking at the time, well, it's double A, I can get in there, double A, not realizing what kind of a level, like we just talked about, double A is, is in yeah. this world. Thinking back then, oh, it's double A, I could jump into double A, and double A is like, well, you're not quite, we like your demo, but you're not quite ready for this level, we can't give you hire you for this job yet, I have two double A's tell me that, uh, one was not quite ready, the other, we can't hire you yet for this and so, and then that was through this agency I'm with, the Sports Talent Agency of America, that I learned, oh, okay, if you want to do double A, you have to have done A. Yeah, you got to. If you want to do A, you have to have done independent or rookie. You ball got already. bones to make still. Yeah, so I was like, okay, I see. So that realization hit. That's when I jumped into the Admirals gig. Fast forward a little bit later. Nobody now. realizes how much broadcasters get laid. <laughs> That's what it is. So then some some kid is like, hey, I'm pretty good. I have a decent mm-hmm. voice. I know what's going on in the game. Right. I don't mumble through my words. Right. I think I can do it. I think mm-hmm. I can call a game. And his dad's like, you got to work on your swivel hips. Because <laughs> you're going to be doing a lot of fucking. There's going to be so much tail. <laughs> and then you get there like, hey, I'm ready to call a double A game. Like, no, kid. Yeah. You got to start with the. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah, gotta head down know. lower, right? Yeah, so that was the Didn't reality. Even know how to put your back into it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so that was the reality of it. And go into to the night that we met. Uh, it's preceded by about a week before David at Oscat. Apparently, he came in to to that night of listening to me for the first time, coming up to the booth, saying, Psh, "I don't know who this guy that is that they have. I'm gonna get one of my guys to do this." And thinking you probably, you know, I don't know who this guy is. This is David telling me the story. I'm coming up there. I don't know who they have. I'm getting one of my guys to do this. And he says, then I sat down there. And I listened to you for about a half an inning. I thought, my guy's a <laughs> schmuck. That's what he thought. He thought Jesus. He my thought, guy's an asshole. <laughs> he thought, oh, I think I need to make this guy my, my guy, guy and right. put him on right. the air. So that's yeah. what ended up happening. So a week later, roughly, you guys are coming into the booth. We're, we're having technical difficulties that night, too. We're having, and it's just turned out. One flip of a little switch would have fixed everything that night. Right. Some equipment I don't have anymore that I'm like, I'm not using that again. And uh, so, so we're we're there that night. Crack open a couple of beers. We're having a good time. It's the uh, the Santa Rosa rosebuds. In we town. were we were having a great time. Yeah. So we're we're calling the game. Coined a few phrases. Yes, that we did. And then things got weird around the fourth. And uh, <laughs> yes, <they> fast. <laughs> it got weird fast when the second owner of 2013, the Admirals, comes in and. And starts demanding we do things differently for the public address. He starts yelling at you two, thinking you guys were the public address. Right. Not realizing public address is in the next room over. Not really understanding what we were even. So he kicks out. He gets into an argument with PA guy at the time who 
we still interact with you guys. See him with me, you know, pretty yeah. often. And uh, I'll tell you what, really, really nice guy. His yeah. name is Bruce. Yeah, yeah. let's yeah. just so, say that. Yeah, Bruce. Bruce is great. Yeah. So and Bruce was sort of an unsuspecting innocent bystander <laughs> totally at the time. Was. He was just there, and yeah. he was doing a great job. I thought so. Yeah. Except it wasn't. It they, was like they the wanted, result of his yeah. great job wasn't the result that this guy wanted okay. instantly. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of like when you're doing a fantastic job. Well, you were a DJ. Hmm. When you're, let's say you're DJing a wedding. Yeah. And right at that moment is that really, really sappy time in the wedding where they've just had the first dance. Everybody's yeah. vulnerable. Everybody's feeling <laughs> the love. And then you bring the dad out. The yeah. dad takes his daughter's hand and he's going to get, and then somebody from the back, back, thing the chef in the place is like i need the cake right now to uh, come and you're like dude i'm doing something right here <laughs> yeah, right yeah. now you don't get the cake except yeah. for the guy with the cake happens to own the place that's yeah and that's what we were running in mm-hmm. that's what bruce ran, poor bruce ran into because he yeah. was doing a perfect perfectly fine job baseball pa gig yeah baseball yeah. pa gig he's yeah. not stomping on you know, he's yeah. giving pause for when the pitch is going to be delivered. Yeah. All the courteous things that yeah. you do as the PA guy. Right. And then this asshole comes in like, <laughs> God damn it, make the make the crowd laugh. Yeah, yeah. Be lively. Let's, yeah. yeah. We, we, get, we, could, we got to get some life in here. Put some comedy into it. Say the guy just tripped over his shoelaces. Like, well, can't really do that if we can. Yeah, because A, that. he didn't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. So, so he, yeah, so he kicks out Bruce doing PA, and I had initially dropped. Fires him on the spot. Yeah. Like, yeah. you're fired. Yeah, you're out of here. Fucking fire me. You're not even paying me. Yeah, I'm a volunteer. <laughs> Here's the right. mic. I haven't even yeah. gotten my hot link. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 He did. In fact, he told him, well, the mic's right there, asshole, if you think yeah. you could do any better. So, yeah, so that all goes down, and I'm. This is live in the inning. In the yes, inning. Yes. So I had to drop the volume, and then about midway through all this going down, I bring the volume back up. And I and I capture the ending of this and and him telling you guys he's offering you guys money when Bruce was here. I'll give nothing. you guys a hundred bucks. bucks to make everybody laugh <laughs> yeah. right now. Yeah, I'm still waiting We're for like, my money. Yeah, he you know, wanted he wanted Barnum and Bailey meets meets Bull Durham. Right, and you can't tell Pete he'll give him a hundred bucks to make everybody laugh because his <laughs> ass will come out. <laughs> my yeah, yeah, my pants there. Just almost came off right there. I thought we had a deal. <laughs> I yeah, thought this was happening. Still waiting for that money. <laughs> yeah. So we meet that night. All this goes down. I one of my interns has to calm me down because I'm just at this point. I, I'm going through the weirdest professional year of my life. Basically, <laughs> just going through all this. We got Nico walking through Bay, up, Nico? Bayview Studios. Where Where are you going? Are you going right now? Are you, you're not going to wait for me. No. Oh man, right, fine, that's that cold. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> okay, moving on. Ah, we got to treat you. I'll like see a, you over there. Got to treat you like a clubby after that. Right. All right. <laughs> so, so yeah, first night. So we meet under those circumstances, and uh, it, yeah, it was nuts. We put all that behind us, and in that fifth inning there, after all that, we we got rolling. We make radio gold from there. It was one of my favorite moments of that season. The second half of all that, I'm fuming after afterwards after you guys leave, and I come back down to everything that just went on. I'm fuming when I go home, and just you know, the most unprofessional night of my life life blah 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 with this stuff and then i go back and listen to the recording we made the next day and i was like wow this is pretty freaking hilarious actually yeah. <laughs> yeah. so, that was good you know yeah. what after the after that asshole went back into yeah. his cave and we yeah. zip tied the door shut <laughs> then uh you should then say it was drunk fun. asshole too yeah. oh yeah that's not only is he right. professional he, they was, were. he was drunk yeah they were partying. drinking his hand looking like hal mccray uh, <laughs> I you, you were not you were gonna be funny <laughs> i want everybody to be lively in here it doesn't look like anybody's having a good time yeah. it's like you've never been to a baseball game no and he yeah. Dude, everybody He's watching baseball. Yeah. No. They don't need Chevy Chase falling down the stairs right now. It took some road trips to the other teams for him to see, oh, I see. Oh, there's a I way that this I that this it. game that's so been I played should, for 167 yeah. years, <laughs> there's a way that this works. I shouldn't be telling our PA to pump up the crowd while our third baseman is off the third baseline bleeding, getting stitches into his left hand. Oh, okay. Yeah. I hadn't realized that. Yeah. So you know, I do, in his defense, I do have to say we were trying to be because it's not our house. It's sure. not our game. And yeah. We were trying to kind of be on our best behavior. You yeah. know, we're not hogging the mic. I don't even know if we were drinking beers yet at that point. Maybe but, one at most. Yeah. yeah, maybe. But then once he said that, it's like, yeah, it was lightweight. After that, it was yeah. like, that's it. Well, <laughs> Turned yeah. down for oh, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you just took the straps off. Let's yeah, <laughs> let's do let's this. Get it going. You, and I hear you in the background go, Pete. 
we've been giving orders to liven it up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Off with the pants. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, good times. So, yeah. and that's the kind of stuff that is a struggle, and you get that next owners, f- f- GMs after. Oh, they all do it. They all do it. They've all made the same mistake that guy does coming into the booth. It's happened another time. My intern, who's now at the Times Herald, sitting there next to me, GM comes in. Are you are you on the mic? No, no, it's it's in there. And they go in. We need this to to make the crowd I'm like wow. It's just a cycle. It just everybody does this. And I guess that's a need to to, to kind of to pull in the casual fan. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't consider you two casual baseball fans. Maybe you're not watching it all the time. It's not about that for casual, but knowing. The casual fan doesn't know when it's time to hit and run. That right. casual fan. You know what I'm saying? You right. two are well aware of when it's time to hit and run. You're well aware when it's time to bump. What, when it's time to go to this left or reliever. That's not casual. Right. Casual fan is, is, is unaware of those things. Hey, there's peanuts. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's the beer garden fan. They're there and they're having fun. And yes. They're drinking and, they're... and that's awesome. And yeah, yeah. That's but, absolutely. And, but there's just, they are precious freaking gold to baseball management. Or to, or to radio stations, you know, right. a sports station that, that right. being able to pull in the casual fan and rope them in, get them to come back. Because they got us. Yes. We're a captive yes. audience anyway. Exactly. Yeah. So, and I'm just so fucking tired of the casual fan. It, God dog it. I just, you know, this, <laughs> again, this is one of those things I can say here that I can't on the air. Like, I'm tired of all of you. You know, I can't. I can't yes, you do, casual fans. Yeah. Don't tweet. And you don't. <laughs> yeah, the casual fans. So, you know, they're a precious stone to sports management and and companies but i i just loathe it and i had to go through it with the nlcs with the casual fan the casual giants fan the casual cardinal fan god each of them equally yeah. just driving me nuts like it it's different with casual giants fan i have to remind them okay your team's not that special that a lot yeah. of catchers paint their nails, and there's right. always some reliever with a big beard and right. one crazy Latino reliever, and everybody's got that. Yeah, I know you think it's torture, but that's baseball. It gets nerve wracking in baseball, the eighth right. inning. Yeah, exactly. That you know, so so that that was one with Cardinal fans. It's uh, I have to explain a lot to them too. If the casual yeah. Cardinal fan, for as much as they get their recognition in the baseball world of the best fan bit and all that, and yeah, we applause nicely and we treat visiting fans well. And so that part of it's earned, but I still have to explain a lot to them too with a cardinals fan a st louis fan also have to factor in racism to player evaluation when they're when they're talking about i don't like this player he does this and that and that okay all right that's interesting and and plus that damn hair of his i'm like okay now we're getting somewhere wow (laughs) i have to factor in okay why didn't you want the now deceased Oscar Tavarison. Okay, I get it now. Yeah, you got a thing against Latino players. All right, you got to factor that into the right. Midwest casual fan. Unfortunately, wow. Yeah, so it's a it's a different. Hey, hats off to Kansas City. Good yeah. for them, right? Yeah, man, yeah. good for them and yeah. great. Fa- I read stuff written by Giants fans who traveled to Kansas City to yeah, you know, witness some of the games. Game six. The thorough drubbing sure. that was Game Six. Somebody wrote to a letter to the Chronicle mm. or the exam, you know, whatever SF Gate. Yeah, that hey, he was there for Game Six and he was in full Giants gear and he had guys saying to him, "Hey, it's it's still a series, mm-hmm. you know, just being good sportsmen." Yeah, yeah, and that's what throws me off. Being out here East Coast a little bit too, yeah. that Midwest guy in me isn't used to. When trash talk goes past fun banter. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, when yeah. you can, and Giants fans, hey, they got me right now. You can give me, oh, we got you again, Fitz. Oh, you sure did. You outpitched us two series in a row. You, man, you're getting us with that, that. But it's just, oh, you fucking suck. Eat my dick. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. That's Hold not on. relevant to right. anything this here. This year is your year. <laughs> yeah. Next year will be mine. <laughs> yeah. Know? That's not relevant to anything. Yeah. You and I didn't have any effect on that out there, by the way. Can yes. I remind and you? And by the way, yeah, we're kick, we're going to kick it. No, <laughs> we aren't doing anything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> This yeah. team that I enjoy watching, yeah, yeah. you well, know, I happen to get one off on the team you enjoy watching, <laughs> yeah. and we'll see next year. Yeah, you know, and the thing like the casual fans, and I, I you know, they say whatever they want to say, who cares? Sure. But I can always just say regression to the mean is a motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, and they huh? have no idea what's going no, on with don't, that. No. Like, yeah, well, that's, that's, I can appreciate how hard it is to do what the Kansas City Royals just did, right? You know, yeah. they got hot at the right time and it didn't work out for them. But God damn, that's great, though. Yeah. And I may get a lot of heat from other Giants fans for saying this. But mm. 
Kansas City Royals, man. I'm a big fan. Yeah, yeah. you got to support I'm a That fan happened a lot with Giant fans. I of think, that yeah. organization, just yeah. like I'm a fan of the Giants. For the same mm-hmm. reason, they had the great personalities. They had yeah. the team mentality. You know, like Pete said, they got hot at the right time, but they got hot yeah. for each other at the right time. Yeah. Boy, that came out. Right. <laughs> I was going to uh, say, you just made other. the notebook of yeah. sexually I'm into a sports competition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, get in the squad. Um, so... The Midwest ethic, as it applies to being a baseball fan, mm-hmm. yeah, I, you it's know, different. I see what you're saying. Yeah. It is different, but there is some, there is a very, very lovable part to it. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, the Bays used to have a lot more. I think it's kind of gone down a little bit. Where everybody was kind of a Giants fan, everybody was kind mm-hmm. of an A's fan. Maybe you weren't all the way. Like you preferred the yeah. Giants for sure. Used to because, see those two yeah. tier hats a lot. Exactly, yeah. and we were known as fickle, you yeah. know, because the Giants were terrible for a yeah. long time, and the A's for. I don't, maybe they still are. They were the most successful franchise in the division era from, yeah, you know, the right. early seventies on. And they still, if not, they're not the number one team. They're still well, up in there. The top yeah. Two yeah. or three or whatever. But the Bay was a A's town. Yeah. Long, the long Giants time, yeah. almost left. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and, and it's, it is a shame to see that, that divide that's kind of grown there because we had that ability to, to appreciate mm-hmm. that, you know, how and, quickly that has changed and how that's gone away a little bit. Now it's, now it it is because of the the sort of the yelpy trash talk you know social media area. That's one thing I can sound like an old curmudgeon on is that yeah. it does it do, you know in the memes the world of memes mm-hmm. you know with the the graphics yeah yeah you know it's like I you did not see I did not go to you and and put a meme of a cardinal pooping on an L A Dodger logo right. that didn't happen you know yeah. I didn't no no Giants fan at least put the meme of. Of a, a big giant squeezing a bird to death on my page, you know, so that was good. At least I've seen that one too. Yeah. Uh, so you know that the trash talk culture, I guess, is a little bit more rewarded, maybe now, than yeah. it used to be. To where that there has to be that sort of back and forth. You know, when when I tried my time to be a, a sports broadcaster, and this is you know twenty plus years ago. Mm. I worked on washing away my, my fanism and that kind of stuff. Sure. And it kind of stuck. You know, like yeah. I, I admire the A's. I admire the Dodgers for sure yeah. more than the other teams. But yeah, I just want to see Adam Wainwright and Clayton Kershaw go at it. Sure. And yeah. I don't care what uniforms they've got on. Sure. Yeah. You know, I, I just want to see great baseball. Yeah. I love watching Madison Bumgarner come out and be like, I'm just going to go yeah. boss hoss. Yeah. <laughs> totally. The entire team. Yeah. You know you what know? I love about a podcast? Mm. I want to see Kobe Ty and Scarlett Johansson go at it. Yeah. <laughs> we get to say that. Dream <laughs> team. Stuff like that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that almost, the go at it almost made the, the right. innuendo. You know, I keep since... What did in my head? Oh three. I've been keeping you an, got an old roommates of mine, old notebook, notebook of uh, sexually innuendo a sports commentary. Uh, I mean, there's some gems that go back. There's one of Vladimir Guerrero breaking his bat. And the commentator says... Well, he left him there standing with six inches of wood in his hands. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just day, a game after game after game, stuff like that. But boy, if, if you want to play quarterback in the Big 12, you got to deal with guys like Dan Cody coming nasty around the corner. <laughs> Whoa. Hold on, pause that. Let's write that one down. Uh, so, yeah, we used to have to, like, okay, what did he say? We'd have to write him down real quickly. Now in the DVR day and, and the device, you, yeah. you just pause it. Go yep. back to it, put the device up to it, hit record, and they're all, we are store, storing them elect- electronically now, all these sexually innuendo sports commentary. Oh, yeah. I think, uh, that's good stuff. One of my favorites was Troy Aikman talking about Eagle safety at the time, Michael Lewis. He's like, he's a guy that spends a lot of time down around the box. <laughs> <laughs> that's my great. two newest ones that nice I have an work audio. If you can get it. Yeah. <laughs> the two newest ones, uh, have an audio form. One is a Raiders, uh, it's Greg Papa, one of my idols saying, Boy, they, they put the two receivers on the same side slotted over there, and they just scissor each other. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That, that's not a visual I was going at. No. Yeah. Last one of these I'll go with for now. Uh, one of the new ones, so it's, it's fresh in my head here, is uh, a hockey one. It's like, you got to know when to poke and when not to poke, because if you poke and miss, you leave yourself wide open. Because, <laughs> 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 you know, there's a lot of yeah. talk about positions there's a frat party and balls you never, never forget yeah, penetrating right. penetration yeah. and yeah yeah there's a john madden one you see that hole he sees that it takes that right up the middle <laughs> okay let me write that one down yeah. that's awesome oh <laughs> the talk thank of, you for collecting those yes i'm trying to figure out how i can insert in a sports you know like if we're happen to be hanging out with you and we're in mm-hmm. the booth for something how can i 
seemingly accidentally accidentally trying hot to... Carl. <laughs> <somewhere>. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta find. We gotta be talking about Carl Crawford somehow yeah. on a hot streak. Yeah, right. Uh, the, I thought I had one in that first year with Bruce in the booth next to me. I thought I said something about uh, you know hitting being contagious. I thought I said something about guys get hot together at the same time. Right. Okay. Right. I went back and listened to it though, and I was like, I, I had enough baseball words in there to break it up. I was like, guys can right. get on a hot hitting streak at that same time. And I was like, shoo, okay. Wow. Very right after me though, Bruce says, I, I guess when I was done talking about describing the pitch, a pitch inside, Bruce says, yeah, he got inside and fisted him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna do a, an entire podcast just, with just us that. in this notebook. Yeah. yeah, 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 definitely. Here's okay. Here's here's the last one. I'll leave it at. Uh, I've always said big guys have trouble getting to balls below their knees. <laughs> that was about some big tall tight end. I'm trying to remember. Man. Yeah, yeah. yeah next times. time, next time we get the chance to be in the booth with you, I'm definitely gonna say, "Oh, look." And Mr. Mac hits a blumpkin up the middle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, this is a good time. Yeah. Listen, yeah. I'm going to get in trouble for being late for dinner. Oh, okay. So, okay. Uh, and and I I actually have some hockey waiting for me on my DVR too. All right. Can I t- remember how this? We'll leave with this. Remember how I talked? We talked about before the hockey organ playing like a rock song is one of our favorite things about. Or basketball, I guess, yeah, does it yeah, too. Basketball, no? Yeah, basketball. I've, yeah, I've heard of basketball. I'm in the kitchen, washing dishes. I got the blues on in the background. They had a, an NHL network game going on. I got to see nationally. And I hear the organ start to play Man in the Box. Right. And oh, yeah. it's the dee, 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 dee. I'm like... <laughs> Oh shit! We committed a penalty. There's somebody going in yeah. the box. There is a man in the box. Yeah. Penalty blues. God dog it! It triggers that in my head now. I hear man in the box on an organ. Ah oh, shit! We committed a penalty. <laughs> so, I forget who's or- organ player, and, and it might have been the Dodgers organ player, but he was genius with that stuff. Yeah. And they had a song ready. Like, <laughs> for the, for like, a, uh, like you know, like if you had a DUI like the night before, he'd play "How Dry I Am." <laughs> up, you know? Nice. That's just, beautiful. Yeah, because that's your job as the organ yeah, player. To tell some right. jokes with the music. With the know? music. My yeah. favorite is uh, when the Blues opponent scores a goal, they play CeeLo's Fuck You in the organ. Yeah. 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 That is good. I'm like, oh, that's good. There is something punchline-y about hearing it played on the organ, too. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Because it's cheesy. Also, I just want to I just want to uh, remind everybody that Tim said uh, man, box, and organ <laughs> in the same <laughs> All the same there. Sentence. See, you got to have enough sports words right. to properly break it up. Just just in there, bat, you know, swing, you know, so that you're not just talking about you got to be disciplined on the backside. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> that's what that you started can't, from. You can't rush the, the little backside. Yes, the little simple phrases. You'll hear Brent Musburger, God, a couple times a game. Yeah, he's a good-looking young tight end and things like that. You know, the, it goes deep into the hole, the penetration stuff. And then, right. so we're like, let's try to keep track of yeah, the we, creme de la creme of these. Let's right, find yeah. the best of the best, the ones that are beyond the pedestrian, good-looking young tight end. You could yeah. really, to, you could build an entire award show <laughs> yes. around that. The best yeah. of them, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, hey, uh, as we close up, mm-hmm. uh, great time, by the way, man. Thank you. Yeah, as always. Here for coming. Yeah. We got we to do it more often. Yes. And, uh, you know, the theme of our show is just interesting people doing doing extraordinary stuff. Okay. And we're lucky enough to just sort of witness your career unfolding as a broadcaster. Thank you. So we're going to get as much of you as we can. I see. Yes. Got it. We have done a couple of segments about just places that we like. Okay. So if you want to give a plug to anybody or anything that's going on out there, like if you have a favorite sandwich shop, we plug the workshop here in Benicia. Mm-hmm. Best, best the restaurant workshop in Benicia. Okay. In Benicia uh, all the time. And uh, who, do you want to plug anybody? I want to plug... The brand new physical education and aquatic center at Cal Maritime. Oh man, yeah, you can right. see it from the freeway. Uh, yeah. Come it's out glorious. to that. Yeah, come out to that in V Town for all the locals. Top twenty-five ranked college basketball plays right there at, at yeah. Cal Maritime. Right. You know, it's NAIA, it's small school, but in a beautiful they are facility, top, in a brand new swanky little spot. That's, we like to refer to it as the house that Marv built. <laughs> house that Marv built. Yeah. So that's my plug, and uh, and I'll plug. Uh, 
plug the Vallejo Admirals at Wilson Park every every June through August. Yeah. Uh, independent pro ball and high high end of it. The level of it keeps climbing. Uh, those are those are the two stops I got to tell folks to go to to plug. Also, so far uh, in the two years they've been around, the characters on the team. Yes. Definitely worth following. It has been one of the, my more fun groups to cover yeah. ever. Yeah, definitely. Definitely unique. Good bunch of guys. Yeah. yeah. Definitely a good bunch of guys. I, I want to plug a local establishment, too. You talk, you got me thinking about food. Yeah. And if you're in Concord, California, and you want Chinese food, you got to go to the Golden Willow and get that human and mm. chicken. Dude, Golden Willow. I yeah. may end up in Golden Concord Angie. covering some high school football soon. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, you need to. Go there. Yes. Okay. Seriously, don't be noted. It, and you go there. Now, the lady who's there, her name is her name is Vans. And she has a photographic memory. And you will okay. go in there and you will don't play around. Get the Hunan chicken. <laughs> you know, get other things. Get the sure. pot stickers. But okay. also get the Hunan chicken. Okay. If you look at any table there, some people are like the it's noodles, gonna be on there. some people like the but everybody's got the Hunan chicken. I see. It's just what you do. Okay. And then the next time you go in there, she's gonna say, Oh hi, and she might not remember your name, but there's a decent chance that she might. Okay. Yeah. And she's gonna say, Oh, you you like Hunan chicken, no onions. <laughs> little spicy, okay. little spicy. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, you, you you're a friend of John. <laughs> you talked about John with me, and then you, you told me that your car was blue and it was broken. And you're like, what the fuck did you do? Yeah. But yeah, she's sweet yeah. and the food is fantastic. Yeah. So okay. Golden Willow and Concord. Sweet. Duly noted. Go I'm there. feeling I'm going to end up calling some football in that area soon. Yeah. Right on. Let me keep that in mind. I feel like we could do this show for like four and a half hours. We could. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to do another one. We'll do another one. Hit me up on Twitter at TimmyFit76. Yeah. Thanks for that. At yeah. John Leon Guerrero. At Pete A. Turner. Pete A. Turner. That's Beautiful. Right. Tweet yeah. us. Get it. Or at Break It Down Show. Yeah. BreakItDownShow.com. Thanks, man. Awesome. Yeah, thanks Thank for having you. me, guys. I appreciate it. I Timmy it. Fitz. Check him out. Peace.